So hello everyone, welcome to the YouTube channel of Petroleum from Scratch. I am Jay Char, and this is Data Analysis and Machine Learning playlist. So in our last video, we discuss about dimension in arrays. And if you if you remember in from our last videos, we are making arrays by uh, defining by inputting the numbers that we want in our arrays. So in this video, we will be carrying forward our discussion about some inbuilt methods that can be used for generating arrays. Because in petroleum engineering, we are going to face uh, we are going to face some problems where we need to have some data pressure data, saturation data, or flow rate data. We need to have some synthetic data. So how those synthetic data we can make by using NumPy NumPy arrays that we are going to see today. So yeah. Uh, starting for our lecture so we will in this lecture we will be going to see we will be using inbuilt methods for generating arrays so the first inbuilt method is a range it is just like the range function that we use in our simple python so a range will return an array with evenly spaced elements for the given interval for example here it is an example here you can see how we write how we write code for a range for getting array from a range so uh, we will be going to make a array of pressures that by using a range that will be going to give me pressure in between 0 to 5500 and having a step size of 500 psi so it will be this array is, will be containing uh, pressure values for starting from 0 psi to 5000 psi at a difference of 500 so the first uh, first point will be our starting point Second point will be our stopping point, and the last, uh, the third point will be our step size. That at what step we want our data to come. And one important thing, guys, uh, this end point is, will be not uh, not be coming in our final array. If you are going to see pressure, oh sorry, pressures, you can see that zero psi is present and five thousand psi is present. Five thousand five hundred psi is not coming in our uh, final array. And if you want to see the dimension of this uh, array, you can see it clearly by the number of square brackets. It is one dimensional array, but you can also check it uh, that what is the uh, dimension by using n name that we have used in our last lesson. Yeah, yeah, you can see it is one dimensional array. So this was the example for creating uh, array, arrays using a range function. Now the uh, other method, other method, other inbuilt method is using lin space method. So lin space will create linearly spaced array. Evenly spaced number will be, uh, come in our array over specified interval. Okay, uh, for example, I want uh, I want an array of saturation values having uh, zero to one values having uh, consisting of zero to one and total hundred points I want in between zero to one. For making that array, I use lin space. Okay, when uh, the step size is known, uh, for example, you want to create a pressure array uh, that will be used in your Vogel IPR or something else, if you were, or you want to use the pressure in MBEL calculation, something else, and you know that uh, I want my pressure at a step size of 500. In that case, use a range. But in the other case, when you know that, okay, I want 100 points in between zero PSI to 5,000 PSI, or you, you know the number of points that you needed, and you, you want to have an array in that case. In that case, you have to use lin space. So basically it will create a linearly spaced uh, uh, data points in the array. So yeah, it will be used for creating n data points in between two given points. So here is an example for creating a saturation array from zero to one having hundred points. Okay, I'm writing saturations equal to np dot lin space. Here lin space will be used. Uh, first point will be my starting point. Second point will be my ending point, and the third uh, third input will be my number of points that I want. Okay, I want hundred points. So okay, and if I print saturations, if I call saturations, you can see uh, I got an array of uh, hundred uh, consisting of hundred points from zero to one. And one important thing guys here, you can see that it is consisting of both starting point as well as end point. Zero and one, both both are present in our this array. And again, you can see this is a one dimensional array. So if I want to know the shape of my, this saturation, you can see this is 100, 
100 comma nothing this means that it is a one dimensional array if if here comes one 100 comma one that will not be one dimensional array that will be considered as two dimensional array so yeah we have made a saturation array consisting of 100 points uh, having the starting value of zero and last value of one and total 100 points are present now coming on to next some uh, coming on to next methods now there are also methods that we can use for creating uh, array and uh, 2d arrays uh, having a zeros at uh, zeros value at each point or ones value at each point or creating an identity matrix so why we why we need to have a zeros arrays or ones arrays or identity matrix why we need to have such type of matrix so guys, this type of matrices are really helpful when you are doing some reservoir simulation work. Okay, you, you have divided your reservoir into a two dimensional grid blocks. And now you want to, you want to do some calculations for, given, uh, for some number of grids, or you want to manipulate data for some given number of grids. In that case, these zeros, ones, and identity matrices comes into role. For example, zeros mainly comes into role when we need a placeholder. Like uh, from uh, uh, zeros, we have created placeholder for different properties of reservoir. For example, I have uh, this reservoir consider some reservoir of Gujarat, and uh, I have made a zero uh, zero matrix. First of all, I will show how to make a zero matrix. Is simple np dot zeros, and let us say I have a fifty cross fifty um, grid system for my reservoir. So. Here you can see I got a 50 cross 50 matrices con consisting of zero at each point. So now I have made a placeholder for my values. Of, uh, now if I want to add values at some given at some given uh, places, for example, I want to add the value of permeability at my grid uh, grid location of two uh, two three two means second row and the third column this row. So I can directly add into this uh, placeholder matrix, uh, zero matrix. How I can add uh, like this, for example, zero, two cross three. So the second row and the third column. Uh, this is known as indexing uh, that, we, that we will see in uh, our next videos, but for now just see how it works. So, okay, so I have assigned my second column, uh, second row and third column, this element as 30. I added the value of permeability at that grade point as 30. If uh, now again, I show the zero array, you can see that 30 has been added at this position. So in this way, zeros can be, and zeros matrix can be used to create placeholders for values of properties of reserve. You can create play, placeholders for permeability values for saturation values at different different grid points as a reservoir is a heterogeneous reservoir is a heterogeneous so each and every point in the reservoir will be varying having a varying property so in that case we need to have placeholders for uh, properties and that um, the best way for creating placeholder is zeros now moving on to next inbuilt method next inbuilt method is our ones so just like zeros ones are used for creating a matrix on which each element in the matrix consists of one. For example, I have created this matrix uh, P and P dot once again, 50 cross 50. So, yep, here my go P. So you can see I got a P matrix of 50 cross uh, 50. Now I want to initialize my pressure value. Okay, that my initial pressure value was 500 PSI in the reservoir. And uh, I want to provide this 500 PSI into grid system. So each and every grid will be uh, corresponding to 500 PSI. So I directly can write, okay, PI, my initial PI is 500 PSI. And if I want to represent in my grid system, I just need to multiply my P with PI and I get uh, output of 500. So you can see at, at each and every point of my grid, grid system, I am having a 500 PSI as my value. Now, one uh, other method, one uh, other useful method that can be used in reservoir simulation is I. So this I will create uh, identity matrix. So again, identity matrix can also be, will also be used for several type of data manipulation in our reservoir simulation in the coming 
lectures when we are going to discuss matplotlib and the, all the plotting libraries in that i will give you a demo or a project type of thing where we will be going to use these zeros ones and i function for data manipulation in resolver simulation type of thing so here you can see i have defined a i variable and that that will be giving me an identity matrix here uh, here we need to give in only one input because uh, you know identity matrix will be a square matrix so we just need to give one input like i have given it here four so it will be returning me a four cross four matrix but in the above one we have to give two inputs one for the x direction one for the y direction for example i want to create 50 cross 10 matrix then I, I, I have given 50 and 10, so you can see uh, I've got a 50 cross 10. Uh, so 50 are my number of rows and 10 are my number of columns. But identity matrix, as you all know, in simple mathematics, identity matrix is a square matrix, so only one input will be given uh, that will define its uh, shape. For example, here I have given four, so it has created a four cross four identity matrix and one is present on the diagonal, diagonal that is the property of identity matrix. So this identity matrix can be used in matrix multiplication of the grids or many more methods that or many more data manipulation that we will be discussing in our coming videos. So yeah, for this video, that's all for this video. In the next video, we are going to discuss the indexing. Just like here, I have used the indexing here for setting up a value at the second row and third column point as 30. So we are going to discuss this in indexing array indexing in detail in our next video. So yeah, that's all for this video. Thank you all. Take care. Bye-bye.